going, boy? It's Pastor Steve here. We uh, are excited to have Pastor Tony Suarez with us. How are you doing? I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, good. Why don't you tell our wife uh, where you're from and maybe a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to be here. I'm from the United States, from Virginia Beach. Church boy my entire life. I call myself a church junkie. It's all I've ever known. You're here for uh, Inspire Conference? Yes, sir. We have four nights. It's just we're expecting a time of healing, revival, restoration, salvation. And the goal is that when it all is said and done, we'll look back and we'll say, God really met us. Like we saw God. We met God at Inspire. Come on, that's awesome, man. Oh, four questions for you. Sure. And uh, let's kick into the first one. What were some of the key elements of leadership every young person should know? You have to value integrity. You must obtain the gift of patience, which no one really, I don't know if anyone really has it. No one is good at waiting. Integrity is of high value. You have to learn patience. You have to be passionate about God and His Word. And you have to learn submission to leadership. It's that easy. What's integrity? My father used to preach integrity, and I say preach because every day he would talk to me about integrity. And he'd say, Tony, your life needs to be like an open book. Anybody can read it. There's nothing hidden in there. You live a life that's pleasing to God. Because I'm my life is a testimony of an invisible God. Uh, when somebody sees God, they're going to see it through you and I. So my life is that testimony, it's that witness. So what I project, what I do, what I say, the, the actions that I take are going to be that testimony or that witness to a world that doesn't know Christ. Yeah. So I have that conviction of me that I need to make right decisions. That doesn't mean I won't make mistakes. We'll all make mistakes. But our witness will be that we got back up again. Then this, this thing about patience, about waiting on God's time. I had crazy dreams. I'm going to be 40 years old. I had crazy dreams when I was 20 years old. I wanted to change the world right then and there. But my passion wasn't always in line with where I was maturity-wise, financially-wise, or if the ministry at that time was ready to release me. It doesn't mean my dreams were wrong. It doesn't mean my passion was wrong. But my, my passion needed to catch up to my timing. Because you can do things in the wrong time and fail. But if you do things in the right time, God will bless it. And God will cause there to be even an acceleration of time if I step in at the right time. And the Bible says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says the Lord waits to be good on his children. And when we hear that verse, we understand that to mean that God is almost like a kid on Christmas. He's just like, I can't, I can't wait to bless him. He's, he waits to be good to us. And so we see him as this God that just, he's just excited. He wants to bless us. But then we read those that wait upon the Lord. Well, we don't see the word wait the same way. We don't think it means I'm passionately just waiting for God. We think it means to take a siesta, conk out and just, but I want to be passionately ready so that when God's call or when the activation of my call comes, I'm ready to go. And I want to be submitted to leadership. When, when Samuel was a young boy inside of a temple and he heard God's voice for the first time, he thought it was the priest. He ran and found Eli and he said, you called me? And Eli said, it wasn't me. Samuel went back to sleep and the voice said again, Samuel, Samuel, because he, God's voice sounded so akin to his priest's or his pastor's voice, they thought it was his pastor. I want to be close enough to my leadership that I hear what they're saying to me, that I can receive what they're saying to me because they're God's voice. They're, they're one of the ways that God speaks to me. They're, they are God's voice to me on this earth. So I want to be close enough so that when they speak to me, I can launch out according to what God has for me. Right. What level of importance have you placed on you know, having a mentor or yeah. feeding yourself, uh, obviously wanting to be a the leader and being full-time ministry what do you do like what did you read stuff was yeah. there someone who's in your life even now that uh, you go to and look to and how important is that for you well, yeah well, i called the telephone number on television i'm just kidding i didn't do that <laughs> i uh see i'm a little bit of an anomaly a lot of people have a story and they'll say one you know rainy night at a youth conference i was 18 years old and i felt the call to ministry and i said use me lord you know call me and i will follow my story is a little different. I, as long as, as far back as I can remember, three years old, four.